Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? Uh, December 22nd, 2024, I'm Carlsbad, California. And I wanna talk a little bit about Bitcoin and why it's so valuable. There's actually two secrets behind Bitcoin's value. And I wanna talk about those tonight. Uh, the first one is that Bitcoin's scarce. There's only 21 million ever to be mined. And they haven't all been mined, but they will be in some time in the future. But it's scarce and the scarcity makes it valuable. But the second reason I think is the real reason why it's got value and the reason that it's probably always going to have value and, uh, and then the reason most people don't understand Bitcoin. The reason people don't get Bitcoin is for this reason. And the reason is that there is work associated with Bitcoin. There's actually somebody ex expending energy to create Bitcoin and that's electricity. And that's why Bitcoin has value because there is something associated there's some pain and suffering that goes along with creating a Bitcoin. It's it's called energy. It's, it's, it's something that, that you have to do in order to create it. And that's so unlike the U.S. dollar, where the U.S. dollar is just printed whenever we need it, however many we need it. And that's why the U.S. dollar will fail and the U.S. economy will fail. They both have to fail because there's no work associated with those with the, with the dollar being created, just creating that will. I guess the only work that will be associated with the dollar is, the, is that we have a U.S military, I guess that's work product, U.S. military that has to enforce the use of the dollar. And if they don't enforce the use of the dollar, then the dollar doesn't have any value around the world. So if you would want to say that there is a work product with the U.S. dollar, it would be the U.S. military. But that's been very, very expensive. You'd say over the course of, uh, you know, this modern times, the U.S. economy has had to support a ton of uh, military expense just to keep the U.S. dollar being used around the world. But when that falls apart, and it will fall apart very soon, there has to be something to take its place. And it won't be another uh, another cryptocurrency uh, because none of the other cryptocurrencies have proof of work associated with them. Most of them have a proof of stake, which is means it's just like the U.S. dollar. You can just do as much as you want, print as much as you want. So there, there has to be this way that you fix some work with something to make it valuable. And we used to do that. A good example of that would have been the U.S. dollar back when it was backed by gold and silver. Uh, when it was backed by gold and silver, somebody had to go into the ground and expend energy to come up with, uh, to come up with uh, the metal to back the dollar or to back the, back the coin, that they made the coin, created a coin out of metal. But we don't do that any longer. And we did that. We destined the dollar to its own death. It was going to die. And that's exactly what's happening. It's going to happen sometime in the future. The U.S. dollar will die along with the U.S. economy. And something has to take its place. So, and I think that very good reason, a very good thing to take its place would be something like Bitcoin because of the two, two very important things it has. It has scarcity and has a work product associated with it. I mean, this is something that has to be, I, that's why I think it was almost divinely inspired because how else would you fit something with work associated with this in this modern digital economy? How would you have done that? You, it would have been so hard. I mean, most people f associate work with the, the physical world, not the digital world. In the physical world, you, your work is like, you know, you need, a, you need a paycheck. You got to go out and you got to expend some energy in order to get a paycheck. There's got to be some work associated with it. But in the digital world, you know, you have this digital economy now where everything is, 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 is done through computers, back and forth through computers. And it has to be digital, but at the same way, it has to have work associated. And it has to be scarcity. All things that don't necessarily fit with digital, because with digital, you know, just anything, everything's digital. It's just, uh, and with uh, things going back and forth over the internet, there's nothing physical about that. That's just, uh, and so to, to, to marry up the digital with the scarcity and create something like Bitcoin with the work product has to be, it's like I say, it's almost like it's too good for anybody to have thought this up. Uh, that's why I always see, think and say that it, the Bitcoin could be divinely inspired. I mean, it could be inspired by something outside of this universe because it's just, it's that good. It's just that it's, it's been able to come up with, it's been able to solve a problem. Uh, and of course, the double spending problem and all the other stuff. But it's been able to solve a lot of problems and come up with something. And I think for that reason, there will be no cap on the value of Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin could go to 100 million, 200, 300 million dollars of Bitcoin. Because what you're using to measure the value of Bitcoin is something that's not scarce. You're using, you know, dollars. You're saying, well, today a Bitcoin's worth $100,000. But the $100,000 doesn't have any work associated with it in its creation. So, you know, it could go to infinite, infinite number of dollars because as Bitcoin becomes more and more valuable, 
and the dollar becomes less and less valuable, the two are just going to be further and further apart to the point where it's going to be a million, two million, three million, five million, ten million dollars just to create one Bitcoin or to or to to measure the value of Bitcoin. But in the real world, Bitcoin really has the only value attached to Bitcoin would be what it costs to create it. But since it's so valuable for its utility to be able to use it across the internet and be able to have it work as money, now it has unlimited value. It could be the value could be enormous. The value could go on forever, and it probably will. Uh, and like I say, I've seen it go from a, oh, probably fifteen hundred dollars to a hundred thousand dollars in a pretty short period of time. So uh, yeah, Bitcoin could the value of Bitcoin could be unlimited as long as we're measuring it against U.S. dollars. And Bitcoin could be the, the one thing, could be the, the answer to so many problems that, that are plaguing us as far as our economy is concerned. Because our economy is in jeopardy because uh, it's getting to the point now that nobody can afford anything. And what you do in order to make the money to afford things is becoming more and more unreasonable because of what, what the amount of money it takes to buy things. You know, it used to be a long time ago, a guy could own, have a job support a family uh, and buy a house and send his kids to college on a one job. Now it takes multiple jobs to do that and you got to go in a, in, a, in, a, in a huge debt. All we're doing is we're just creating ourselves, we're just creating debt. We're, we're, just, we're just creating debt. There's always got to be some drama down here. People drink too much. Um, so yeah, there's always, now we got the situation where we just go in debt to get things instead of paying for it, having some sort of a, a system where Things are measured in this in a, in a way we can we can actually pay for it, and not have to owe somebody, some banker, or sort of some corporation, or somebody. So anyway, yeah, we're uh, we're just going further and further in debt. And nobody gets ahead in these in this time, and we're causing a lot of problems in our lives. You know, a lot of it's causing a lot of mental issues, a lot of a lot of personal issues where we're we're, we're put under so much stress to come up with money that doesn't really buy much anymore, and this is causing a lot of emotional and um, and, and it's causing, uh, you know, people to have problems, nervous breakdowns, all kinds of stuff like that. That's all being caused by the fact we live in this debt ridden society because we've got currency that has no value to it because there's no work associated with the currency, no work product as far as the currency is concerned. And it's just it's, it's being legislated by, you know, a bunch of people that just put more and more controls on us, getting us further into debt and causing us more and more problems and putting more controls on our lives. So anyway, I think I got a train coming, so I'm going to let you go. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.